Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Edgewater Baptist online service for Sunday, April 26, 2020. Because of the restrictions placed on public gatherings, we will be using this medium to still have our morning worship service. Welcome to everyone tuned in, and a very special welcome to our first-time visitors. Special welcome also to our brothers and sisters from the Waterford Baptist Church. Our leader today is Deacon Ruben Mir, and our preacher is our very own pastor, Reverend Dr. Dylan Toussaint. We pray God continued blessings upon them and their families. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Our worship team will now lead us in a time of praise in worship. Please sing along with us.
blessed morning to you all. Welcome to the online worship service of the Edgewater Waterford Baptist Circuit. Thank you for joining us. Thanks be to God, there is no social distancing in communicating with God. As we unite our hearts in prayer, we are being reminded that there is power in prayer. The time of prayer is the time of power. The place of prayer is the place of power. When we work, we work. But when we pray, God works. Let us pray. Father God, we pause at this moment to acknowledge you as Lord God, creator and owner of the universe and everything that is therein. We acknowledge you as the God of wisdom, knowledge and understanding. We acknowledge you as the God who loves us beyond our ability to comprehend. Gracious God, we thank you for waking us up this morning in our rightful minds. And we thank you, God, for the provision that you have made for our basic needs. Thank you, God, for the greatest gifts you could ever give us. Forgiveness, love, and life through your perfect son's death on the cross on our behalf. We thank you for the invitation extended to us to come boldly to the throne of grace where we can obtain mercy. Thank you for interceding on our behalf. Thank you, God, that by your grace we are filled with hope and we are strengthened to face the challenges of each new day with our minds stayed on you. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned and have come short of your glory, but we thank you for reminding us that your blood is still available, that your blood still washes and your blood still cleanses. Father God, we pray for your divine intervention in the condition of our nation, Jamaica and the world at large. COVID-19 is out of control, but thank God, our God is still in control. Gracious God, we confess that some of us are overwhelmed with fear. Fear of this dreaded disease, COVID-19. Fear of being stigmatized and marginalized. Fear of being unemployed. Fear of losing loved ones. And it goes on and on. But we are being reminded in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We pray that you will take from us the spirit of worrying and give us the spirit of faith so that we can trust and depend on you to see us through. We are convinced, O oh God, that when we put our trust in you, you will turn our fear into faith, our panic into praise, and our worry into worship. Lord, we acknowledge you as the omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent God. The God who closed the lion's mouth for Daniel. The God who delivered the three Hebrew boys from the fiery furnace. The God who healed the lepers, raised Lazarus from the dead, put a baby in Sarah's arms, parted the Red Sea for Moses, opened the doors of the prison for Peter, is still our God today. Lord, you still specialize in things that seem impossible, so we can certainly leave everything in your care. We know all powers belong to you, and so we are calling upon you for divine healing and protection. Father God, we are charged to pray for the elderly, the shut-ins, and people with chronic diseases who are at high risk for severe illness for COVID-19. You are the doctor in the sick room. Lord, we place before you the first responders, our health care workers, nurses, doctors, members of the health and security force, and all those who are trying to help us to save lives. Lord, we just give you all the praise and all the glory. Lord, 
We pray that those who continue to play important roles in health and well-being of our society, those we often take for granted, the farmers, the utility workers, the sanitation workers, Lord, we just place them before you. Please to protect them, Lord. Give them courage and strength and let them feel your presence as they are working. Provide all they need to serve others and provide for their loved ones. How can we forget, Lord, our leaders, the leaders of government, churches, and other sectors in Jamaica? We pray, Holy God, that you will give them wisdom, guidance, and protection. Father God, we want to leave everything in your hands because we are convinced that when we leave everything in your hands, we will eventually see your hand in everything. May your will be done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Our scripture reading comes from Psalm 4, and I'll be reading from verse 1 through to the end. Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me, and hear my prayer. Holy sons of men, how long will he turn my glory into shame? How long will he love vanity and seek after leasing? But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call upon him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon them. Thou hast put gladness in my heart, more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. Verse 8. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now listen to the announcements. Announcements. Please be in touch with your respective class leaders for information and any updates. Remember the sick and shut-ins. Please visit or call if you can and keep them in your prayers. All friends and members are asked to join the prayer and fasting team this and every Wednesday for a chain of prayer starting from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Join them as we pray for a nation, a world, those affected by COVID-19, our leaders, and our family. Join the prayer and fasting team this and every Wednesday starting at 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Each session will last for 30 minutes. Hi. It is now mandatory that we wear a facial covering or a mask while in public. While wearing a mask, please keep it on. We must cover our mouth and our nose to be protected. Try not to touch the outside of the mask. But if you do, wash your hands or sanitize them immediately. Remember, never touch the inside of the mask. When you get home after being in a public space, if possible, remove your shoes and your outer clothing and go straight to get a shower. Don't forget to wash your hair. There are so many tips for prevention of COVID-19, but the best one is turn a your yard. Maintain a healthy lifestyle by exercising, drinking lots of water, and eating three to five servings of fruits and vegetables each day. Wash them thoroughly using water before you eat them. Sanitize the outer packages of your groceries using sanitizing wipes or diluted beach water before you put them away. If you have a chronic illness like asthma, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, or any other type, it's important to take your medication every day and follow the advice of your doctor. We need to keep those conditions under control. To boost your immune system, you can take vitamin C, D3, B-complex, zinc, 
or any other multivitamin that your pharmacist might recommend. These and many other tips are available at LouisvillePharmacy876.com, Ministry of Health and Wellness, Jamaica, and the World Health Organization. Please be safe and God bless you. Happy anniversary to anyone celebrating wedding anniversary this week. God continued blessings on your marriage. Also, happy birthday to anyone celebrating birthday this week. Many happy returns and God's blessings be yours as well. He's a man of mystery, an interpreter of dreams. He was thrown in the lion's den. Call upon your name, oh Lord. The three Hebrew boys. Oh, save me! Why did they not burn? The finger writing on the wall. A book written between the 6th and the 7th century BC. It's the apocalyptic book of the Old Testament. Join the Reverend Dr. Dylan Toussaint Wednesday nights at 7.30 for The Daniel Story. A book written by Daniel himself. The Daniel Story, Wednesday nights at 7.30.
can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Our pastor, Reverend Dr. Dylan Toussaint, will deliver the undiluted word of God. Let us remember to pray that God will anoint him in a special way and hearts and souls will be blessed. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Thanks again for joining our online worship service. And thanks as well to all who played a role in making it possible. Our text this morning comes to us from 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 through to verse 7. I'm reading from the King James Version. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And they knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take him or take unto him my two sons to be bond men. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house except a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow these vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels and that thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God and said, Go, sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, it is not very often that governing authorities across the world encourage and in some cases order their citizens to stay home rather than to go to their workplaces. But that is the reality today, is it not? As many persons across the world, across the globe, are now constrained to remain within the confines of their home, and especially those among us who are under lockdown. The context of our text this morning is also set within the confines of a home where a mother and her two sons reside. May I suggest that this is a very popular story, well known and perhaps well well preached. But I would like this morning to suggest that in this story, we see four main realities. Four main realities. Number one, I'd like to suggest that in this story, we see what I want to call a sad situation. 
a sad situation found in verse 1. According to verse 1, there was death in the family. D-E-A-T-H. Death in the family. The husband and father within this family had died. He had died even though he belonged to the prophetic guild. Sadness and sorrow had come to this family. Even though it had served the true and living God, death came in its midst. And for some families today, perhaps listening to this broadcast this morning, death may be the reality that you are now facing within your home. Sorrowful, sad, lonely experience for many people. Death, death, death. But when we look on this story, not only was there death in the family, but there was debt in the family. D-E-B-T, debt in the family. Because quite likely, the prophet, the man of God, had died with debt outstanding. You see, in those days, debts did not die with the deceased. Neither were debts insured. So the onus was on this widow to pay this debt. Because of her inability to do so, the lenders or the lending agency had now come to sell her two sons into slavery. Can you imagine that? And this was not unusual, beloved, because in the patriarchal society in which she existed, the man was the main, if not the sole, breadwinner. And that is why we find that throughout the scriptures, widows, widows were oftentimes earmarked for special attention. Widows, along with the poor and the orphans, every now and again, God, through his servants, would speak to the people and say to them, do not forget the widows, the orphans, and the poor. Do not forget those who are husbandless, fatherless, and penniless. That was the reality in those days. And perhaps there are some of you this morning listening to this sermon that in a similar situation or a similar way, you are saddened. You are facing the reality of D-E-A-T-H while being in D-E-B-T. Perhaps there are some of you who will be in such a situation, a sad situation of distress, despondency, depression, despair because of the crisis that you are now facing. This is the reality in this story. A family facing the reality of death and death. What a situation that this family was facing. And so if you are, you are in a similar situation, you are at the right place at the right time. You are listening to the right sermon because this story relates to your situation. But... Not only do we see in the story what I want to call a sad situation, but we also see in this story what I want to call a strange question. Yes, a strange question. Because in the second verse, the first part of it really, the, 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 the man of God, Elisha, after asking her, what do you want me to do for you? That's not the strange question. But then he went on to ask, what hast thou in the house? What do you have in your home? Now, depending on how you look at it, Elisha's question could be interpreted as being a bit too inquisitive. True? True? 
It, it could be also interpreted as being too intrusive into the lady's business. But when you drill down into the text, it becomes obvious that his intention for her was that she would become more innovative and more intuitive in regards to her situation and the crisis that she was facing. It wasn't so much that he wanted to know her business, but he wanted her to know that she could arrange and rearrange her business for her own and her family's well-being. It is in that regard, beloved, that I'd like to suggest under this point of a strange question. What hast thou in the house? I'd like to suggest two main things that he was actually suggesting to her. One, I think he was suggesting to her by that question, instead of being totally dependent on help from outside, become more self-reliant by helping yourself from inside. Uh -huh. Instead of looking overseas, I want you now to look within the confines of your own home and see what you can harness to help you out of the rut that you are in. He's saying to her, beware of this dependency on outside. Beware of feeling that if it's not others from outside offering the help and the handout, that you cannot make it in life. He's saying to her, it's time for more self-reliance. Not that you are totally independent, but along with that, you are able to help yourself. I hear Miss Lou saying in the times when she was alive, turn your hand and make fashion. That in essence, Elisha was saying that to this woman. Turn your hand and make fashion. It's time now to not focus on outside. What help I can get. But what is in my home that I can use to help myself? I believe that Elisha was also suggesting to this widow that instead of focusing on what you don't have, focus on what you do have. Let me say that again. Instead of focusing on what you don't have, Focus on what you do have. Maybe when he asked her, what do you have in your house? Maybe the pot of oil was literally all she had left. Because if you notice, when he asked her the question, she immediately said, I only have a pot of oil. What about the furniture? Could it be that she had already sold off the furniture to help to pay the debt that was outstanding? What about other things that people would expect to be in the home? Perhaps they were already sold off and literally all she had was this pot of oil. It's easy or would have been easy for her to focus on what she had lost. To focus on what she no longer had. To focus on the things that now she did not have and own in terms of her possession. But I believe Elisha was saying to her from this strange question. Instead of focusing on what you don't have. Focus on what you do have. The fact is, beloved, if there is any good from this crisis that the world is now facing and the Jamaica, it is that this crisis has and will force us to become more innovative and more intuitive as a people. 
if, if this crisis does nothing else, it ought to make us look inward even more. Look within the confines of our homes. Look within the confines of our yard and ask ourselves, what do I still have that can be used to help me in this crisis? I, I want to say, therefore, to those who have lost or may lose their jobs, I want to ask you this question that Elisha asked this morning. What is in your house? What are the innate, inborn skills and abilities? What are the resources? That God has given you. That need now to be unearthed. And harnessed. And used. And utilized. As we face this crisis. And the possible crises. That will come as a result. Are there unused. Or underutilized resources. And gifts and skills. Abilities, talents that you have? What is in your house? I wonder if there's some people this question is saying that we now need to do a little bit more farming on our own. That perhaps we need to become a little bit more creative with things that we use to overlook and undervalue. And now say, listen, if I'm out of a job or if I'm getting less on the job, what is in my house? What do I have that I can use and utilize to help me along the way? I want to say to those this morning whose businesses have closed or is facing closure, I ask you, as Elisha asked this woman, what is in your house? What are the areas of expertise, enterprise, or experience that you have not yet tapped into as yet? What is in your house? You see, beloved, adversities, have a way of providing fresh opportunities. Adversities have a way of creating ingenuity and further creativity. Adversities come sometimes, and when they come, they allow us or make us tap into our inner resources. And be able to do things that we never thought we could because of the crisis that came. Isn't that what we are seeing with churches today? Isn't that what we are seeing with persons selling masks today? That in the midst of every adversity, there comes a fresh opportunity and so I ask the question before I move to the third point again what is in your house what have you been overlooking and undervaluing what have you been paying little attention to what have you discarded and disregarded that may be vitally important going forward in the crisis that the world is facing. So, 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 so we see in this story, first of all, a sad situation. And then we see in this story a strange question. But, 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 but let's drill deeper. Because when you read the rest of this story, we see a specific instruction. A specific instruction, of course, given by the man of God to the woman of God. Now, now, 
at first glance, the instruction that Elisha gave was seemingly senseless and meaningless. As well, for some people, the instructions that he gave was a waste of time and effort. For some people, the instruction that he gave to this woman was irrational and nonsensical. However, when you look deeper in this passage, it becomes evident, does it not, that the instruction he gave her was at least two things. One, it was a test of her faith and confidence in God. A test of her faith and a test of her confidence in God. In other words, will you trust God to provide? To provide for you even when you are down to your last pot of oil? I want to throw the question to all of us this morning. Will we trust God even when we are down to our last straw? Even when we feel that we have reached rock bottom. Even when our backs are against the wall. Even when we are at our last ebb. Will we still have faith and confidence in Jehovah Jireh. Who is our provider. It was a test of our faith. The test of her confidence in her God. And I believe God still tests us even today. I believe that with all that is going on, more than others, we who know God are being tested and tried to see if in the midst of this, Will our faith and confidence be shaken or will it be strengthened while we go through the crisis? I also believe that this instruction that Elisha gave her was not only a test of her faith and confidence in her God, it was also a test of her faithfulness and her obedience to God. A test of her faithfulness and her obedience to God. I wonder if you notice the, the text that Elisha said to her, Go and get vessels, empty vessels. When I was a boy, they said empty vessels make the most noise. Well, get the empty vessels nonetheless. And, and he went on to say, borrow not a few. Just giving her a little hint there. And, and don't we realize that the more vessels she borrowed the more the oil flowed. One can imagine how foolish she felt initially, borrowing empty vessels to be filled by only one dege dege pot of oil. <laughs> I, I, I would love to have been there to witness what took, transpired in that home. One pot of oil. One pot. Vessels have come in. Our sons have been faithful going out and borrowing vessels. Not borrowing more money, but borrowing vessels. Empty vessels. I'd love to have been there to see that 
when she was pouring, the more she poured out is the more that was put back in the one pot of oil. That the more she gave is the more she received. The more she released is the more she got in return. But she had to exercise her faith in faithfulness and obedience by doing what God had said to her through his prophet. I put it to us, beloved, that in times like these, our faith is being tested to the point where God wants us to be faithful and obedient to him. Silly as some things may seem to the world, as irrational and nonsensical as some things may seem to the world, little is much when God is in it. And the more she poured, is the more God poured into her pot. The more she gave is the more she received. The more she released is the more she got in return. Faith in action. And, and I'm, I, 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 I want to confess that it has not escaped me. That Elisha told her to shut the door. Everybody don't have to know your business. But shut the door while you are doing this. And allow God to work in the confines of your home. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? That you are as it were in the confines of your home. Ordered to do so for certain days. Ordered to do so because of health conditions and because of age. The Lord could be saying that even while you are there, miracles can take place. Transformation can take place. God's work can take place in your house, in my house, in all our houses. I, 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 I want to leave, therefore, with a a final observation. Final observation. Certainly, we see a sad situation. Death. Death. We, 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 we hear a strange question. What hast thou in the house? What do you have there in your home? And then he gives a specific instruction that was followed to the T. Test of faith and confidence. A test of faithfulness and obedience. But, but the story ends with what I want to call a sustainable provision. Yes, a sustainable provision found in verse 7 where Elisha says go sell the oil pay thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest hallelujah this godly provision beloved totally cancelled her debt and this godly provision completely supplied her needs it's totally canceled her debt and it completely supplied her needs pay off your debt and then live 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 of the rest your needs will be supplied for our god shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. He provides. He cares. 
he sustains. And so this morning as I, as I close this sermon from this well-known passage, what's in your house? What's in your house? And where is it that the Lord is saying, do things, try things, be innovative and creative. And allow the Spirit of God to bless your efforts. Would you bow your heads with me? Let us pray. All sufficient, all supplying God. Oh, how we praise Worship, honor, and adore you this morning. How we thank you, God, that being constrained in the confines of our homes does not limit us from experiencing your mighty work, your mighty power, and your sustaining provision. I pray, Lord, for those who are worried about their jobs. I pray for those who have lost their jobs. I pray for those who are worried about their income. I pray for those who are worried about their financial state, their houses, some loan that they have. God, I ask you to speak to each and every one of us. Help us to hear you clearly as we continue to ask what is in my house. Thank you for innovative, creative outworkings of your spirit in our lives. We pray all of this now in Jesus' name. Amen.
So, may grace, may power, may the peace of God rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We hope you will join us again as we worship together. Please remember to pray for each other and maintain the required social distance. There is power in prayer. Have a blessed week in the Lord.